Prospective financial information, uh, express notes, P7, chapter 12, the final recording. So the big picture, as always, we start with. Um, it's another one of those areas which you will not have come across at F8, only examined at P7, so um, it's always quite nice to have something new to have a look at. Possibility sometimes of gaining a few marks simpler for definitions and for applying the standard client acceptance procedures to this non audit situation. So, again, definitions just simply learn them and spout them out. Okay, what is prospective financial information? Well, it basically may be seen as information that is based upon assumptions about the future and actions that may be taken by the company that the information relates to. So, unlike a statutory audit looking at last year's historical information, this is about the future going forward. Major differences to traditional audit work is that procedures consist primarily of analytical review and inquiry. You can't really test controls, you can't really do substantive testing of transactions because they're yet to happen, if you think about it. So um, you've just got to look at the assumptions, the, what's been given to you, and cross-check one information against another, what, what is said against the numbers that are given, that's analytical review. Not examined every time by any means, but does come up on a sufficiently regular basis, so please consider it as an important part of your studies. Terminology. Okay, what's the forecast? Generally, but not always, you prepare something for a 12-month period. A forecast is PFI based on management expectations at the time of preparation of both future and management actions. A projection, however, is something that's generally prepared for a longer period, often up to five years. A projection is PFI based on hypothetical assumptions about future events and future management actions, and it's more of a what-if approach. So what if we did this, what if we did that? Um, many more assumptions, clearly it's a longer period, so it's going to be much, much harder to um, get realistic information and cross-check. In fact, it's probably more important that you cross-check to as many different types of information as possible before you come up with your opinion as to whether um, you found anything wrong. Now, as with an audit client, normal due diligence procedures apply, including risk assessment and these should be carried out before agreeing to act as the reporting accountant in relation to PFI engagement. So in so many ways no difference to a normal statutory audit. In particular consideration should also be given to the following. Who are the intended users of the information that you're going to report on and what are they what are they going to use it for? You need to understand the basis for the assumptions. Are they realistic? Are they applicable? Are they relevant? You need to understand the complexity of the components of the PFI. Are there many, many spreadsheets interlinking to each other? Are you going to need to have a computer IT Excel expert or, or not? What's the, what's the subject matter? Is it very valuation based? We can therefore need a an expert in that area. Um, depends on the industry. You may well need to get an expert in that particular field. Clearly the period covered you need to clarify is it one year, two years, three years, five years, what's going on? You need to establish the time allowed for your work. If something is only allowed for three days and you think it's going to take eight weeks, clearly you've got a problem. You need to sort that out at the beginning of the assignment. And then the final thing to note, and this is very important, the type of assurance required. You don't say something is true and fair when doing this type of work. What you're trying to do is review the work to establish that nothing is wrong with the work. It's more of a negative type of assurance. So you're not finding that it's fantastic, you just make sure nothing is wrong. Okay. Reporting accounting procedures, 
Given the nature of the engagement, majority of procedures will be restricted to analytical review, as I've said before, and inquiry. So you've got to basically speak with management, speak with whoever's based the, value, uh, the report and information on. Um, you need to ensure you've got sufficient knowledge of the business, both you and the people working with you. You're going to consider the reasonableness and reliability of management assumptions. So you're going to cross-check them to other data, other companies, um, other experts, this sort of thing. You're going to, throughout the whole document that you're reviewing, check for consistency, um, both within it and across to other things that you know about. Don't be frightened in P7 to state the obvious. You are going to check arithmetical accuracy. Does it add up both across and down from one spreadsheet to another? And finally, the good old management representations. They've given you everything that you've asked for and more. PFI reporting, well, apart from a standard reporting content, title, etc., it's important to ensure that you must state the management's responsibilities. What have they been, what are they responsible for, what have they prepared, um, and what have you not done? You must also confine your conclusion to sort of a fairly limited conclusion because at the end of the day it's future assumptions, future work. It's very hard to actually say it's going to be right. So what you end up doing is saying, well, it's not bad, it's not wrong. You didn't find anything wrong with it. Now, of course, if you do find something wrong with it, you need to state that. But assuming you don't, you don't say everything's true and fair, you just say it's not wrong. And then you must obviously ensure you put caveats into the document explaining your inherent limitations of the PFI. You aren't able to verify future inflation rates. You aren't able to verify this or that. You must state where you've had to mitigate your report because of A, B or C. So PFIs are very similar to a statutory audit, which is why accountants get asked to do them with their experience, but they are different to an audit. Um, in, t in its entirety. So um, a nice new subject, work your way through it, comparing it, contrasting it to an audit. It's actually very similar, but also subtly different. That's the key thing which students seem to seem to forget. So anyway, that's the end of uh, P7 Express Notes. Hope you enjoyed it and good luck.